Hello and welcome to Control Delete Tutorials. Today we'll be looking at how to uh, tackle long hair for a character. I have a video that shows how to do short hair, uh, usually for uh, a male. Um, but this one I want to look at creating long hair for a female. Um, so I'm going to end up just hiding everything but the uh, head here. So I'm going to just have the head. Um, let me get rid of the other stuff here. We don't need lights and cameras. So what we can do is <clears throat> we can build uh, the female hair if it's going to be long. We can kind of make a uh, shelf or uh, to work from. So what I'm going to do is just select the areas that the hair um, is going to kind of come from um, something actually we'll just work our way down here if we're going to do like really long hair um, and so what I want to do is create an area where the hair can kind of lay on and we're going to use uh, under the graphite modeling tools under freeform uh, we're going to use strips so I'm going to show kind of how that's going to work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the polygons here. Actually, I'm going to come. No, that's far enough down the head. I'll just use that. Um, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate it. Just kind of shift and move it a little bit as a new object. I'll say OK. And um, now what I'll do is I'm going to take the hair object here, or basically the hair that I'm going to make and I'm going to use the push modifier and push it out just a little bit so use push and I'm going to push it out here kind of in all directions and then convert that back to an editable poly now I don't want the hair to kind of lay directly on the head uh, that's one of the reasons that I've pushed this out um, but something else that I can do is uh, I'm going to take the uh, the polygons that are here on the side kind of pull them away from the body just slightly and I'm basically going to s just model out real quick just something that is about the shape of hair but this is not going to be my final hair by any means it's just going to be something that I use I'm going to remove the materials from here as well and I'm not so much worried about my polygons or my topology or anything like that for this piece this is basically going to be used um, as a reference point for modeling my hair. I'll kind of show how that'll work. So I'm just going to select everything kind of from here down and I'm going to use relax modifier on this selection. Relax. Why is it I can never find things relax? There we go. And I'm just going to relax this a bit convert to editable poly again oops convert to editable poly and I'll take those again and kind of pull those back out alright so now I'm going to take some of the mesh here and kind of bring this outward This will all make a little bit more sense in a minute once I've kind of got this laid out the way I want it. Okay. Um, actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to remove the material from here. So I'm going to go to Utilities. Uh, I'm going to go to well, go to UVW Remove. If you don't see it, I've added it here, but uh, it'll be under uh, More, and then I just want to select it from this list. I've already got it here, so it's not showing in the list. I'm going to remove the materials from here. And I'm just going to grab these polygons and pull them in. Um, so I'm going to pull these in just a little. And just kind of like that. Alright, so now this next part, and again, I'm not worried about the topology here. Normally I kind of um, 
talk a lot about topology and making sure I have good topology. Um, but in this case, what I'm making is basically something that the hair can lay on. Um, so I'm just kind of making a form for that. I'll pull these areas out here. I'm going to use soft selection here. Turn that down. Okay. Turn off soft selection. And so this is going to cover the hair that kind of falls over the shoulders. Okay, scale that out. Now it would be good to have the mesh here for the body just to make sure I'm not going to cover any of this, but basically what I'm doing um, is just trying to quickly demonstrate uh, a method uh, that I'm starting to use. and I feel like it's a pretty good method, but um, it's nice because I don't have to have uh, like perfect topology to do this. I'm going to just relax this area. And scale this out. Kind of flatten it a bit and pull it back down. Alright. So let's say this is just going to be my basic layout. I do want to make sure that this, let's call it a hair cap, falls over top of my character's shoulders. I can always unhide. And see, the reason I don't want to use mine is mine has a hoodie, so. Um, and my character had short hair, so that wasn't really an issue. All right, so the next part. So I have this hair cap, uh, but I'm going to create strips that come down uh, across here. Um, now if I turn my grid on, We'll see it down below here. Um, I need to take in account a certain amount of spacing. Okay, so each one of these little grid squares is 10 units uh, based on how max defaults and how my max is set up. Um, so I know that that's about 5, so uh, if I look at it in relationship to my character, alright, so their whole head is basically 10 units across. Uh, the reason this is important is the strips that I'm going to end up drawing here. Under poly draw, I'm going to set my units here. I want this to be set off of units. 10 is going to be way too wide, so somewhere between 2 and 3 is going to be what I'm kind of looking for here. Um, so what this will allow me to do is I can now paint, not paint per se, but draw out uh, strips. So if I start from the... Uh, wait. Before we do that, we need to make sure that we have this set to draw on um, surface. Either draw on surface or draw on selection. I'll do draw on selection just to make sure I'm only drawing on what's selected. And I'm going to select both the head and the um, uh, hair cap. Now, right now, I don't see my free. Uh, I don't see my graphite modeling tools uh, being displayed. That's because I have these two things selected together. Um, maybe we should try to do surface. I'm going to do surface. Um, let's see if it'll allow me to do multiple surfaces. I think it'll only allow us to do one. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's kind of weird because this is kind of the same idea as just drawing on selection, which we'll just do that. That's fine. Um, so now I'm going to do my offset here, and I'm going to just offset this at first slightly. So I'm going to set this to strips, and so now whenever I start drawing, I'm going to draw out these strips, and I can use these as hair. And I can kind of do these and overlap them over and over. Uh, let's first just do the underlying hair structure. So I can kind of lay these out and it'll follow the um, kind of this cap that I've laid out. And what's nice about this is I can lay out a bunch of these. 
Um, I believe if I set it on surface, what it actually might do is also draw on top of the ones that are being created here. Um, so now I can go in and set my next offset a little bit higher so that I can start laying the new ones that I make over top of the old ones. And kind of make these hair strips. I can just hit undo if I get one created that I don't like. Um, and do offset again. Go a little bit further up this time. See, it's not going to end up drawing over top of um, the face, but it will connect between any gaps, and I'll just subdivide those uh, later. That way I can get these other areas in. And so what's nice about this is I can just sit here and kind of lay out these strands over and over again. And then I can end up mirroring this, or I can just draw the other side if I want. All right, so I'm going to finish that, turn strips back off, um, and now I'm going to delete this cap. So I delete the cap, and what I'm left with is the basic hair form. Um, and so now I can either separate these into individual objects, or I can kind of move these around. Uh, I'll probably want to take the center of these and pull them down towards the scalp so that I kind of get that hair parted kind of look. Um, or I can end up holding shift and dragging down some of these if they end up coming in too far. And then you'll just end up texturing them to look like hair. And that makes it nice and easy for and I'm making hair. And if I take this, um, I'm going to use symmetry. And I'm going to move my symmetry plane over further. I can't have it there, but it's going to end up creating some weird poly, um, some you know weird polygons here. So I'm going to grab my mirror plane and just move it over. And I'll convert this back to an edit poly. And then I can just grab these and pull them back. No, I didn't. I didn't end up pulling far enough, but that's fine. Um, I'll just delete the group of those. So I can grab all of these and pull them back over. Now, it would be a good idea to unwrap. Uh, the one side before you end up doing the other side. I'm just going to pull this section back up here so we're not going down into the scalp too far. And I can pull this back over. Have the hair be kind of offset to one side or um, do the part in the middle. But Oh, and then I can use under modeling swift loop and add in other sections there that may have been missed. And so now it's just a matter of uh, I can either go into my elements and detach each of these. I don't have to detach them, but it then allows me to work with a group of them. Like if I just grab a section here and go to soft selection use, turn my settings down a bit here, and now I can take a, you know, some of these and pull them out and kind of affect the layering differently. And I can see I need to swift loop there again. And that way I can kind of overlap these. Um, actually we'll just put a brown material on here for now. And then it's also a good idea, uh, I'm going to attach this all back together, 
is select everything and go to our smoothing groups and set them all to the same smoothing. And that way they'll kind of look a little nicer there. Um, so that works pretty good. It keeps, and based on however I create the hair cap uh, that I'm creating, uh, will allow me to, you know, pull the hair away from the ears or pull this out further, um, or I can kind of model out a very basic shape for uh, the hair and then do this over top. I don't really like the whole, you know, symmetry look, but uh, just so I can do this quick for the uh, demonstration. Um, and then you could always do your first layer. Um, so if I hide this, I could always do my first layer directly on the head. So I'm going to do this just kind of quickly. Um, I'm going to try to create a new object for doing this. And then I'm going to pick surface and pick the head. Um, so what I'm going to do is I can do my strips kind of here. Let me pull these back down a little here. Um, so I could have a section of them already on the head. And kind of just start them out this way. And then when I unhide the other ones, uh, unhide all. I'll have some that are closer to the head. And obviously, I need to pull these away, but. Um, just so you get the basic idea. Um, let me just use push. Push these out a little bit. I love the push tool. But I'd be able to then have some that are really close to the head and follow, you know, the jawline or the face, um, like that. And then I'll end up um, attaching those after and kind of laying the, layering those out um, and then I just have to move around some of the polygons and stuff so we don't have you know this weird helmet kind of look happening but it's kind of a nice quick and easy way to make uh, long hair for a female um, and they unwrap very nicely so it's um, nice to kind of work with all right so hopefully you liked this tutorial and found it informative. Um, you know, please like, subscribe, and share, and all of that good stuff. And um, thanks for watching.